Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams, and thank you for joining me again. Today I want to talk about three primary issues. We're going to talk about adhesives, we're going to talk about solvents, and I want to talk about wash. Okay, so just real, real quickly, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I have recently learned that liquid cement is actually an adhesive. I didn't know this, but there is a difference according to the scientific world, between glues and adhesives. They get really upset if you, you use those words interchangeably. Glues are essentially, I think, of things that are made from natural materials, animal fats. Uh, everybody knows you've heard the story about sending the horse to the glue factory. Well, there's some truth to that, crushing up bone marrow. Anything pasty like that that is derived from plants or animals is typically a glue. Adhesives are usually created in laboratories and um, are synthetic. So I didn't know that. So there's a big, if you are in the scale model building world and you go to some of these clubs, they get really upset if you use those, ter those terms inter interchangeably. I learned that the hard way. Um, now, most of us have grown up uh, familiar with Elmer's glue. Um, one of the biggest advantages to using a regular white glue, and, and this is uh, Tester's Model Master variant, for canopies and clear parts. Um, this works really good because it, it, with cyanoacrylates like these, like this is a super glue made by Bob Smith Industries, um, they tend to have this effect, the vaporing curls up and it actually changes the molecular, molecular structure of the canopies and clear parts. And that is known as crazing. So if you get crazing on some of your clear parts, it's going to make them appear cloudy. And here, here's some clear parts for this particular P47 I'm working on now. But you can imagine that if you have a, um, it's almost like a chalky paste kind of, and it makes it very, it, it really detracts because your cockpit usually sits on the top of your model. So, I mean, that's the first thing people are going to see is it, it diminishes the overall result. So I advise people to use a, a specific glue. Um, there's even a jeweler's crown glue for, for, um, if you really want to get fancy about it, but there's a glue that's made for jewelers to craft, attach the crystal to your watch, um, and it's clear, clear. It's called clear cement. But this one, testers, I think it's five, six dollars for something like this. It has a really cool applicator tip and makes it very easy to put on. So avoid the crazies. All right, crazing, pretty cool term. Anyway. Here is Tester's Adhesive Liquid Cement. Now, th this new, they used to have a different formula and the bottle was situated differently even. And now, if you can see now, they have a metal tip on there. That's a metal tip. And let me tell you something about this liquid cement. It runs very um, easily. It, it's, it's about the consistency of uh, a little under corn syrup, a little thinner than that, but it's, it's very thin. And that metal applicator tip makes it very helpful. And I'm gonna show you here in a minute, we're gonna get started on the P47. But whenever you have very critical component areas, like here I'm going to join the fuselage section to the wing here on this P47. And that is not a job that you wanna leave to a weak glue, a weak adhesive. You want, to, you want to put something on there that is really going to make a tight bond. Now, the, the cyanoacrylate, is, this is a, a very uh, popular among the remote control people because they can, if, if their aircraft crashes and they lose a wing or a tail fin, uh, tail uh, aileron or elevator, they can just quickly reattach it. And they even use some accelerant, they call it, this product called Zap, Zip or something that makes it cure even faster. So it's really good if you don't have a lot of time. But if you are building your model at home, I would prefer to build, use strength and over the quick uh, benefit. Because, you know, if you get a broken uh, tail fin or something and you're out there in, the, in a field somewhere to, to use your remote control, it's important to you to get that thing back and working immediately. But if you're at home and you're building a model, you're not under the same time constraints. So go for the, the better bond. And, and here, science has proven that the, the uh, polystyrene, to poly, for polystyrene to polystyrene, this actually has a, uh, po uh, uh, I guess a chemical in it called uh, toluene. And, and what, what it does, that's what you smell. That's what the, the glue sniffers get high off of. 
but uh, what it does is it actually promotes the, the uh, bonding, the molecular, molecular bonding process. And uh, so it's, it's very helpful for it, make, establishing a very tight bond that's going to last for a long time. All right, I need to stop being so long-winded in these things. Okay, so we got we went through the glue really quick. Now let me talk about this uh, masking. I, I probably didn't highlight this before, but this is Bob Dively, and I hope that's the way you pronounce it. I could have went two ways with that. But uh, this is a liquid masking film, and this I learned about this through secret channels. These, this is a, kind of like a secret that they don't want you to know about. But think of micro mask. It's essentially the same thing. It's a thin scum like coating, but it, it's it's allows you to get parts, coverage over parts that you don't want to get overspray or, or other items, and then let, after it cures, come back and peel it off. And it's, it's very, very handy. And what I found in just a, a quick demonstration of it is that it adheres very well after a couple coats, after you put two or three coats over. I mean, it's better than any tape that I've used because of the use of, uh, it doesn't take off the, the under, coat underneath it. Very, very helpful. Now, I'm going to do transition really quickly into talking about solvents. When, you, when you're airbrushing, it's important to you to have the right consistency for your uh, paints. And your paints, typically, the, the insiders will tell you, you want to have it about the consistency of milk. Uh, uh -huh. And so in order to do that, a lot of times you're going to have to use a thinner. Now this is, um, to me, is thinner, which is essentially some kind of alcohol. It smells just like rubbing alcohol. It, it, I'm sure it's some form of alcohol variant. But uh, what it does is it works specifically for tester stuff. And I found out the hard way because I tried to use a different type of um, thinner and it really wound up with a lot of clotting and I was cleaning my airbrush for a long time. And so what I'm saying, what I'm advising is if you're going to use certain paints, especially acrylic paints, like like these, um, use the manufacturer's uh, uh, thinner. I, I know that the, you, you can. There's ways to get around it, but avoid the hassle. Pay another dollar or more, whatever it is, and just get the one that is specific, specifically designed for that particular paint. Here is a good example. This is a uh, Tester's Model Master. Now this is Jet Exhaust acrylic, and I don't know if it's possible to see. But if you can notice that there's different colors there, right? And what is happening is settling, right? The medium that is used by the manufacturer to uh, keep, keep the uh, paint molecule suspended in the, in the medium is after, after it sits for a while, it likes to sit and, and, uh, and uh, separate, just like any uh, sediment. And um, as a consequence, when you go to mix it up, it is going to be thicker and more dense in some areas. Now, I always use a cocktail mixer whenever, whenever I mix my paint. But invariably, it, it's something about when it sits for a long time, it tends to be thicker. And for that reason, I, the other day I used um, the Tamiya thinner on it and it had that clotting um, process, had that, that problem. So I went back to, I went to the manufacturer and got the actual what they recommend and haven't had that problem since. So I don't know what the different, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know what the difference in the properties are. I just know as a general um, uh, rule of thumb, if you're mo moving forward through your model project, you're going to be beset on all sides by all kinds of difficulties. The last thing you want to do is get to the point where you're having to stop and completely rip apart your airbrush and, and clean it thoroughly because you used the wrong um, solvent. So let's avoid all that. Now, uh, one more thing I wanted to hit really quickly while I have a little bit more time. Okay, I think we could probably see pretty good from there. Um, all right, I want to talk about the use. I, I, I used to look at these model boxes with, with the examples of the, the guys that, you know, the, the professional model builder that they went out and got. And I used to always wonder, how did they get their rims so round on their, on their tires? How did they get that paint to just be so, so perfectly uh, spherical, right? And somebody tipped me off and they go, Joel, that's not that hard. All you got to do is get you a template. 
and what I've done here is I went out and got me a template and what and it's one two easy peasy you spray the uh, the wheel the entire wheel the cow the color that you want in the center right and then you get your piece of masking tape here I'm gonna use Tamiya masking tape 40 I think it's 40 millimeter it cut out the, the size of the, the tape put that onto the center and then respray the whole thing black and that's how you get those perfectly spherical um, uh, tires so that's just a, another tip I, I want to give you hey and thanks so much for joining me again of course my name is Joel Z Williams and this is props aircraft scale model building I love it when you guys comment on the site I love the interaction and please like and subscribe we're trying to keep the pirate ship afloat all right thank you very much I'll talk to you next time there goes nothing for all the marbles <laughs>